Welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and today I'm taking you over the best £250 gaming PC build for 2016. So make sure to drop a like rating and subscribe but without any further ado let's get straight into today's GeekerWatt video. So the first question I always get asked regardless of the build is how will this computer before perform? So I've put some gaming benchmarks on your screen now but really uh, ideally this build is aimed towards um, 1080 and 720p in some of the most popular titles and slightly easier to run titles such as World of Warcraft, League of Legends, Minecraft, CSGO, uh, Dota 2, those kind of games. It does have a quad-core CPU making it compatible with some of the latest AAA titles such as the GTA 5 uh, but you are going to be running at lower resolutions and much lower settings whilst achieving lower FPS as well. But without any further ado I'll take you over the parts for the best £250 gaming PC build for 2016. The CPU I've gone for is actually an APU. An APU combines uh, both the CPU and the GPU into one chip, giving you the best value and performance for the money. It's the AMD A87650K. It's one of AMD's highest A8 chips, and the A8 chip uh, lies around about in the middle of uh, AMD's APU range. It's a quad-core CPU clocked at 3.3 gigahertz. 3.3 gigahertz isn't a lot, and you are going to want to overclock this chip, and this chip is overclockable as well. And at £75, this AMD chip is a great. Uh, value option. The motherboard I went for was the ASUS A68HM-K. Uh, the reason I went for this motherboard is because it's nice and cheap. It comes in a micro ATX form factor, uh, which is in the middle of the uh, the two main, uh, the three main motherboard form factors. Sorry, uh, it's got an FM2 Plus socket, which is the slightly new socket design over the FM2 socket, and is really great value at fifty pounds. It gives USB 3 and PCI 3, uh, not to mention it's also got SATA 3 6 gigabit per second, uh, so, so you can achieve those really fast transfer speeds over an SSD later on down the line. It has the upgrade ability path, uh, the upgrade path, sorry, to uh, upgrade. Uh, uh, another graphics card in here later on down the line such as the GTX 950 960 or the R7 or R7 uh, which will make this uh, the system a really really solid uh, AAA um, title uh, machine at 1080p. The RAM I went for is a very specialist choice and there's a reason, there's a few reasons for that for example. It's the G-Skills Ripjaws X series 8GB uh, kit, it's got two 4GB DIMMs at DDR3 2133MHz speed. At £40 it's also great value and great value is something you really are looking for in such a tight budget. The reason I went for two 4GB DIMMs is to give dual channel and twice the performance and twice the bandwidth to the APU, something incredibly important uh, with a system like this. The fact that I went for DDR3 2133MHz speed is also uh, crucially important as a dedicated graphics card uh, will normally have its own onboard GDDR5 memory. GDDR5 memory is extremely fast and extremely expensive, hence you have slightly smaller quantities of it and that having this faster DDR3 memory certainly will increase performance for the APU and the graphics department. For storage, I went for the Seagate Barracuda 1TB drive, 7200 RPM is as fast as hard drives get and the 3.5 inch form factor is, is fully standard and you've got plenty of room for these sort of drives in the case we've gone for. You can also go for the Western Digital Caviar Blue, uh, some people have a preference between the two drives, I've used both and never had a problem with either. Um, as with any hard drive, you are prone to data loss down the line so make sure you've got backups of your, of your key data, any games or whatever, a lot of that's often stored in the cloud and can be re-downloaded anyway. Uh, and a thousand gigabytes is more than enough for even the most uh, size demanding of AAA titles and at £35 it's another great value addition to this build. The case I've gone for is the Exigma Tech Recon, it's an ATX mid tower case and at £22 it's a really nice deal, it looks really really nice, it's got a front LED intake fan and some really nice fancy pictures as well you can see at this case. I really like it personally, cases is just preference but this strikes a nice balance between uh, looks and value. The power supply I went for is the EVJ 430 watt 80 plus certified ATX power supply. It's one of EVJ's lowest end power supplies, but you don't need anything major for this build whatsoever. And, and it's even got um, enough capacity and enough um, longevity, shall we say, uh, to allow upgrade of a graphics card later on down the line. 430 watts is more than enough and the 80 plus certification uh, means that it will perform above 80% efficiency at all time and that's a universal certification uh, that's put on qualifying power supplies by an external company. So for £250 this really is the best uh, this really is the best build you can get in this price range. If you found this video helpful drop a like rating make sure to subscribe and as always we'll see you in the next GeekerWatt video.